girthiest crocodile here. Girthy. But tell you what, on a dime, he is quick. So quick. That doesn't yeah. stop him by no. any means. So, no. uh, yeah. No. He's, he's still pretty fun. Girthy, but quick. Absolutely. That's how I want to be described. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to the big screen and watch Monty coming out. Here he comes. Look at him. You get over that land bridge. Oh, there goes your tummy. Good job. Okay. Yeah, Mons. Now, what we want to do is teach you how to be safe in crocodile territory. So, what Robert's going to show you is everything you shouldn't do. What Robert's doing right now is standing too close to the water's edge. That's what we call the danger zone. That is the danger zone. Not a good idea. Anywhere within around four or five meters from the water's edge is not particularly safe. That's safe over there, but this is nah, not a good idea no, if you're so, up in Northern Australia. Yeah, North Queensland, Northern Territory, Western Australia, yeah. you've got to assume there's a crocodile in every body of water. And at this point in the show, when I did the show with your dad, he just hopped right in the water and showed me what really <laughs> not to do. I remember seeing that footage of him with Monty just jumping in and yeah. was, that was crazy. What a mad dog. <laughs> Can I give it a go? Can I try it? No, Can no. I jump in with it? No. What do you reckon? Jump in with Monty? Give it a go? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 18 now, Mum. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Alright, now as Monty makes his way out, you'll notice here that he doesn't make any ripple on the surface of the water. He's all about camouflage, all about the stealth. But he knows exactly where I am thanks to the vibrations I send out. Gets him grumpy though, me being in his water. And now that he's nice and grumpy, he's uh, all yours, Mum. <laughs> come, come on, right here. Good boy, look at the food. Good boy, Monty. Monty, you are gorgeous. Do you want to go get Robert? Or I'd really like to try to get you. Can go get Robert? Good boy. Good boy. Come on, Monty. Now we're going to try and show you another strike here with Monty from the water's edge. Thanks, mate. Now you got to keep in mind here, a big crop like Monty. He's easily capable of putting on a very fast hit. There you go, mate. There you go, mate. Just like that. Good boy, Mon. Give it up for Monty, mate. So, um, there you kind of get to see that strike from the water's edge, but Monty does have another little trick up his sleeve. Completely natural behaviour, known as the tail walk. That's Pass right. back over to Mum. Crocs don't just strike from the water's edge, they can also come vertically out of the water to catch their prey. They can catch birds and fruit bats and even grab something off a limb. Good boy, Monty! We've got his very favorite, it's a rat burger. Fresh from the cafe, the old rat burger. <laughs> They're not fresh from the cranky cafe, Rob. I'm kidding, we call them chicken burgers. We don't call them chicken burgers. <laughs> Monty. Oh, so we're going to get Monty out of the land one more time for you guys so you can see top speed of a crocodile once they're out of their element out on land. Come on, Monty. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Look at the food, not me. Look up here. There you go, Monty. Good boy. Nice work. Yeah, for Monty, everyone. Oh, look at it. Awesome. Oh, I love this bloke so much. But Monty here shows you pretty clearly where is dangerous in crop territory and, and where is not. Now, Monty, even though he's quick from the water's edge, on land, I can sit down in front of Monty and look at what he does. He wants to go back into the water. I'm in a very compromising situation here, sitting down, but he knows that he's just got no chance. It's not worth his time. He's not built like a horse. Look at what happens, though, if I get down close to his water. Monty. What do you reckon, big boy? Can I play around in here? Well, apparently you're perfectly safe. <laughs> hey, big boy. Oh, you can see after a while, he just kind of can't help himself. And when he thinks he might have a chance of defending his territory, what he'll do is he'll actually submerge under the surface of the water. That's how you know a crocodile really means business. They'll submerge, they'll tuck their little legs in by their sides, and they use their tail to propel themselves. As a general rule, crocodiles just don't like anything messing around in their water. It's just not on. Now, that makes our job very simple. Don't go in the water. That's about it. If you want to stay safe around crocodiles, the key is to not break these simple rules. Always stay at least 
four or five metres back from the water's edge. Never overhang the water in crocodile territory. And uh, of course, don't go swimming. That's just a recipe for disaster. You really only have anything to worry about when you are in this kind of general sort of strike range. That's the only time a big croc like Mott is going to want to put on a hit just like that. He just doesn't like me in here, in his space, in his territory. So, it's a very, very simple message. But if we can do this, if we can learn to coexist with crocodiles and follow these simple rules, we'll be doing two things. First of all, we'll be protecting our... <laughs> we'll be protecting ourselves, but we'll also be protecting crocs. Every time there's any kind of altercation, someone gets grabbed by a crocodile, Everyone wants them dead. Everyone wants to go out and kill out all the crocodiles. Just cull them, remove them, get rid of them. That's just an archaic way of thinking. It doesn't do anything. All it does is create a false sense of security for the area that you've culled in. People think they can swim there. You're still not safe. More crocodiles will still move in. All you've done is destroy the environment. You've destroyed the chances for a beautiful apex predator. Let's not hate and fear crocs. Let's celebrate them. Let's look at how beautiful they are and just do this. Just stand back from the water's edge. Use a bit of common sense and you'll be just fine. That's going to ensure their survival. They're an apex predator right at the top of the food chain. Arguably the most important animal in their ecosystem. It's the least we can do to just give them a little bit of space. I mean, it's as simple as just not doing this. That's about it. I don't think that's too big of, a, of an ask. Now, Monty's done a great show for us, <laughs> he's Kenny now, but I reckon it's time we're getting really fired up with something big, something he can really sink his teeth into. Chandler, over to you. Okay, we've got a nice big piece of feral pig meat. We're gonna see what Monty does. Chandler's tied a rope to the piece of food so that he can pull on the rope and simulate a struggling animal. And then we'll see what Monty would do in the wild if he caught something that was fighting back. All right, so Monty's lining up a strike. He strikes, he grabs that food item, but he misses it, but the pig goes right back to the water and gets grabbed. So as soon as he's got that food item, instinctively he takes it back into the water. Instinctively. Is your tummy a little bit stuck there? Okay, you're good. That muscular body made it back in the water. So now let's see what he's gonna do. Crocodiles use a lot of different techniques to overpower something. And one of them is a death roll. You little ripper, we've got a death roll. Monty's gonna try to spin that animal off its feet to death roll and see if he can drown it very quickly. This is an awesome technique they've been using for millions of years. And in the water, the crocodile is the supreme predator. Three death rolls. I feel like an auctioneer. Do I hear four? Can I have a fourth death roll? Fourth death roll going once. Fourth death roll going twice. Ooh, I don't think we're gonna get that fourth. Yes, four death rolls, you little ripper. That's fantastic. Monty, you are amazing. That is incredible. Sometimes they'll five death rolls. Wow, he's really on a roll. Okay. Sometimes they'll violently head shake or try to submerge to the bottom with that food item. But this is definitely his favorite part of the day. He, it's kind of like playing tug of war with your dog. If your dog weighed 350 kilos. So it's a stack of fun. Oh, six death rolls. Six is my lucky number. We'll call it there. Good job, Monty. Way to go. You are such a beautiful boy. Did you get that all by yourself? You are an amazing hunter. And then he's got that little piece of string to floss. Yeah. That's how we keep your teeth all nice and shiny. Yeah, you've got very beautiful teeth. I love them. Yes, you do. Who's that over there? Oh, some little children. <laughs> Did you notice those sweet children? You know what's interesting is children usually don't come into a problem with crocodiles because you say to a kid, there's crocodiles in there, and they go, got it. <laughs> Usually, if there's a conflict between people and crocodiles, alcohol's involved, and crocs don't drink, so that leaves adult people. 
Hey, Monty. We don't want any accidents to happen. Oh, Monty, you're not moving right now because you're listening to my voice. Hey, we all know you're a male crocodile and you can only do one thing at a time. It's okay, I'll be quiet so you can think. <laughs> That's how you tell. Yeah, science. You can tell the male from the female. See, as soon as I'm quiet, he's like, Oh, I can move now. <laughs> there you go. Oh, good boy, Monty. Did you get your mic wet? I did. Yeah, I sound like I'm underwater now. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. So, um, this is the point in the show where Monty is supposed to swim majestically home. Yeah, and home's that way, mate. He's, uh, he's had a lot to eat. In fact, you might call him the full Monty. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're on fire today, huh? Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, this is true. How do you think we're going to lure him all the way home? Maybe you shouldn't tell him. I think step one is turning my mic off. Uh, <laughs> but I reckon step two is someone's going to have to jump in there and swim him all the way home. Oh, and, it's an uh, interactive audience part. <laughs> that'd be fun. But I reckon it sounds like a lot of paperwork. I'll just jump in and swim him home. Hey, give it a go. What could go wrong? Yeah, jump in with him. Let's go. Yeah. You ready, Mon? Ready, big boy? All right. Oh, dear. Is this the I'm 18? All right, let's see if Robert can get Monty's attention and lure him all the way home. We should probably have him in the water, is the only thing. So, if you can put your crocodile back in the water, it's hard to swim him home when he's out on land. So you're just gonna go around that way. See, that's a great plan, okay. So we're going to go this way, which is the opposite direction of where he's supposed to go, but he's in the water, so yay! Alright, let's see if Robert can now get this crocodile to swim home. Please do not worry, don't panic. Robert is fine, the water is heated. It's about 30 degrees Celsius in there, it's quite pleasant. Monty's pretty excited. It's like a big old dangerous pool toy, isn't he? Look at him go. He's right at the surface. He doesn't care that Robert can see him. He's like, no, I'm just gonna do the best that I can to get this float. Let's see how I go. Look at him. He's like, wow, dessert. <laughs> yeah, he's really swimming quickly now, so you might want to move even quicker, Robert. So, what I'd like you to appreciate is you've just experienced what you can see nowhere else on the planet Earth. Big hand for Robert.